Bridge of Spirits is a throwback to the classic 3D Zelda style of games. It has melee combat and climbing, similar to games such as Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, or even Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Platforming that recalls games such as Ratchet and Clank, and puzzles like you might see in The Legend of Zelda. The Rot are a bit like Pikmin, or the minions in games such as Overlord. But this chill action adventure is more Zelda than Dragon Quest. One part tiny Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and one part Micro Machines. It's sort of like Final Fantasy VII Remake's combat system. I've never played a game like Deathloop before. I've played a lot of games that are a little bit like it. Dishonored, Hitman, Outer Wilds, and even Dark Souls among them. There's nothing quite like Scarlet Nexus, a game that combines inspirations from fast-paced character action games of the Devil May Cry and Bayonetta school with epic JRPGs the likes of the Persona and Tales of series. More like a combination of traditional Tales combat and a character action game like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, which looks more like something out of Guilty Gear Xrd and Chicory is best described as a top-down, Zelda-like adventure. Darksiders tells the violent story of war, a mission that heavily borrows from gameplay elements from both the God of War and Zelda franchises. God of War takes inspiration from both Devil May Cry and Onimusha like a lot of third-person action games these days do. Horizon Zero Dawn with rodents isn't exactly the worst description for Biomutant. Hell, it even features a robot horse. Uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Borderlands, Devil May Cry's. I will admit that when I initially saw a top-down action roguelite called Curse of the Dead Gods, complete with swords, bows, environmental hazards, and semi-random rewards, my first thought was, hey, you know, this seems a bit like a Hades knockoff. In reality, Persona 5 Strikers is far closer to an action JRPG like Kingdom Hearts, with ideas from contemporaries such as Rocket League, Fortnite, and Overwatch that's clearly inspired by a reverence for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Genshin Impact and its expansive world clearly draw inspiration from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. From the art style to the stamina-based climb-anything mechanic to the gliding, it's impossible not to be reminded of it. Glide slowly through the air and climb any surface with a slowly depleting stamina bar, because Breath of the Wild made it so that that's just in every open world game now. Ghost of Tsushima's combat is like a witch's brew made with bits of the Batman Arkham series, the pre-origins Assassin's Creed's, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Think Counter-Strike with hero elements. That's the elevator pitch for Valorant. You know the elevator pitch. Do a Dark Souls, but make it anime. The elevator pitch for Remnant is basically Dark Souls with a heavy focus on ranged, gun-based combat. Ashen shamelessly borrows the major trappings of Dark Souls. It's a genre remix that samples the combat and exploration of a lightened up Dark Souls and the action and energy of Uncharted. Neo owes a lot to Dark Souls. That's a phrase you hear all the time these days, but in this case, Death's Gambit cribs the vast majority of its gameplay ideas from Dark Souls. Let It Die is yet another game in the now familiar Dark Souls tradition. Fans of Dark Souls will notice more than a few similarities for sure. Perhaps no modern game is more blunt about its influences than Eldest Souls, borrowing heavily from Dark Souls. We haven't seen many pure action games like Darksiders 3 in the past decade or so. Oh wow, so this is like a whole new experience. This is, I, I can get on board with this. Darksiders 3 has taken some clear inspiration from Dark Souls. 